John Exter was a former board member of the Federal Reserve. He created what is known as Exter's Pyramid for visualizing the organization of asset classes in terms of risk and size. This shows how the larger the markets, the more risk is involved, and it is a good judge of which markets will become most illiquid when the monetary order is thrown into chaos. I have redone Exter's Pyramid to show the transition of wealth that I see occurring in this paradigm shift from paper wealth into real wealth. It is not that money will collapse into gold like his pyramid. It is that wealth will pass through the most illiquid paper assets, through cash, through the other pyramid, of the most needed and real tangible assets. Once on the other side, they will serve as a basis to create more trust to start new enterprises and ventures. So what is going to bring about this final shift in wealth? I believe it will be something in the real world that will break. It will be something from outside the financial or political world, where they cannot paper over the problem with secret bailouts or propagandize it in their media. An example of a real thing breaking through this paradigm would be oil disruptions, outbreak of war, or even a simple default of the silver market where they cannot deliver the amount of silver they promised. There needs to be something in the real world that skips the record of the tune the criminal elite are playing. Something undeniable, something that would shake the trust in the system, and that the official story would be so obviously different from the reality on the ground that people are forced to wake up. This will send the paper markets into shock, and the wild gyrations of the market will cause massive dislocations. The age-old response of the monetary floodgates opening, and the paradigm puppets trying to calm the market will fail. The population will react violently at these responses as we go through the societal anger phase of the awakening. The whipsaw of the markets, and the violence in which it will happen, will shake the faith everyone has in the markets, and any relief they get from monetary stimulus will only provide an exit forever from that market as it will never be trusted again for another generation, if ever. The first market to completely evaporate is the derivative market, as it has no intrinsic worth. Quadrillions in derivative bets will not be settled, and the market will cease to exist. JP Morgan is by far the biggest player in this market with $90 trillion in exposure. Yes, just that one bank's book is larger than the entire world's economy. A 1% move the wrong way in their book would result in $900 billion of losses. This can only be sustained because J.P. Morgan has the implicit backing of the unlimited balance sheets of the Fed and the Treasury. J.P. Morgan is simply the street muscle for larger, more hidden criminals that own the world's privately held central banks. The first big credit default swap was engineered by Blythe Masters. Because we wanted to free up our capacity to do more business. All of those derivative bets will get shut down and never settled, which might have well have been the plan all along because derivatives have much higher profit margins than most other products they have to sell. They can book massive amounts of profits in the short term, knowing that as John Maynard Keynes said, eventually we're all dead. There could also be a plan to blow up the paper assets and yet to be the first to claim the real assets that they are custodians of, like SLV and the metals in their vault at the COMEX. Because we wanted to free up our capacity to do more business. This derivative implosion will bring about a flight from all counterparty risk in all paper assets. People cannot stand the gut-wrenching ride of the manipulated markets, and the derivative bombs take down the banking institutions, and it becomes obvious that sovereign nations are nothing more than emperors wearing no clothes. Most importantly, with the new monetary stimulus, money ceases to perform the most basic role as a store of wealth, as paper markets crash and people stuff more and more dollars into real assets. This does not only happen on an individual investor level, but also on a national level, when nations like Brazil, Russia, India, and China lead the way for the rest of the world as they seek to dump their dollars. With so much counterparty risk and uncertainty, small businesses and real estate become illiquid as banks and credit seize up under the incredible stresses in the market. Things become valued in the cash market, which during a hyperinflation, there seems to be a lot of cash around but no one in the right mind would loan it out with inflation roaring on a daily basis. The combination of Western central banks printing massive new amounts of money and the BRICS nations dumping their dollars en masse along with food and gas prices skyrocketing and the whipsaw of unstable markets leads to the gut-wrenching reality that things will never be the same. Once fear spreads through society, we will see empty store shelves and gas lines. The Dow might hit nominal new highs, but no one will care as the relative cost of life goes up much faster and people start worrying about their next meal instead of the next iPhone.